Again, if you're watching me on the World Wide Web and you've been, for whatever reason, under a rock, we have a, what I believe is going to be an award-winning music project that is doing things around the world, and it's called Chum A Lie. If you've not downloaded it yet, I want you to come to this century and download that project, and it is going to bless you immensely. I've been waking up to the sound of Yahweh trying to figure out who was singing it. It's been in my ear and all around my head. And then there are people around the world that have been blessed by the singles that are on there. Bless your name and all of the uh, tremendous artists, psalmists, I call them, that uh, uh, did their best to work on the musical tapestry that we were able to beautifully put together. And that's just the beginning. So go ahead and get that album and it's going to bless you. There is word from the Lord, and I am so excited about what the Lord has been dealing with me about, not just concerning the All Nations Worship Assembly, uh, but, be, but about the body of Christ at large. And he's saying so much right now to make sure that the heart is stable. Uh, we've been in a series for several weeks now called After This, and it is a simple uh, principle, but it is something that I have to reiterate uh, because very often when people are under current pressures, they don't make wise decisions for the next. And so what I've been doing is actually prophetically steering the body of Christ and steering those that watch in the direction of the next move of God, the next act of God, the next action of God, the next response response of God. It is so important that everyone watching me and everyone in this building remember that God is not a man that he should lie nor is he the son of man that he should repent or the biblical term there means to change his mind. God makes no mistakes and so even when things come as a surprise to you or come uh, unexpected to you, the Lord already has prepared and tailor-made a plan, not just for your recovery, but also for your prosperity. Don't you let the enemy bag you into a corner and think that your goal is just to recover. Oh, no. You're not going to face the hell, hallelujah, the pressure, the terror, the torment that you face this year just to be healed and functional. God God's goal for you is not to make you functional. He wants to make you prosper. And I just want people to be reminded of the fact that the Lord rejoices in the prosperity of his servant. And so the Lord is going to do some things. You know, one of the scriptures I've been meditating on early mornings is, uh, no good thing will the Lord withhold from those that walk upright before him. If you will walk upright before the Lord, no good thing will he withhold from you. So if you're watching me on the World Wide Web right before I start to yell and scream, I want you to type, there is an after this. If you're in this room, I want you to take notes on your devices or in however you're going to be listening to me today and just remind yourself after this, after this, there will be an after this. This is not the rapture. This is not the end of the world. This is not the worst of America. There's going to be an after this. This is a very strategic year. It's a very deliberate year. And I hope to be able to narrate some things that's going to inspire you and help you to fight through what you need to fight through. Now, before I lose myself in this, because I feel it coming already, I do want to invite you to watch us tonight as we worship the Lord. You know, worship is one of the weapons that I've been able to hold fast to any witness witnesses in this building. It is important that when you are afraid of anything that you find something else to adore and the power of adoration can break the authority of torment on the heart. You've got to find your way and your place and your space in worship. And so tonight if you have nothing to do and if you're not watching Netflix and chill you ought to be in worship and make sure that you can spend some time in the presence of the Lord. We're going to Isaiah 41. Hi Tuka. And we're going to verse 10 in the Amplified version. Isaiah 41, verse 10 in the Amplified version. If you're not there, I'm going to give you three seconds to get there and two and one. All right? We're going to Isaiah 41, verse 10. And I'll be reading for you in your hearing verses 10 through 12. And I want you to hear this. It opens up with this, fear not, there is nothing to fear. <laughs> 
for I am with you. Do not look around you in terror and be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen and harden you to difficulties. Yes, I will help you. Yes, I will hold you up and retain you with my victorious right hand of rightness and justice. Behold, all they who are enraged and inflamed against you shall be put to shame and confounded. And they who strive against you shall be as nothing and shall perish. You shall seek those who contend with you but shall not find them. And they who war against you shall be as nothing, yea, nothing at all. The primary thought is coming from the B clause of the 10th statement or the 10th verse where God says something very, very unusual. I will strengthen you and harden you to difficulties. Father, help me to preach this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you are in this room, I need your partnership with this personal prophetic word to you. If you're not in this room, I'd like you to type this over yourself because this is what God is mandating that you say over yourself for the remainder of the year. I will not break. I want you to say that right now. I will not break. Come on, say it again. I will not break. Cooperate with me. I will not break. Say it to you. The heart feels that I will not break. 40% of our Bible, particularly in the Old Covenant, is prophecy. And God would raise what the accurate uh, Hebrew term for prophet, which means covenant messenger, to bring Israel into alignment when they got into covenant violations. You see, in the Old Testament, the Lord would write out and he would give out edicts, is the appropriate term, that would set up the quality of life for his people to live by. Say yes. He would describe to them what to do, what not to do, who to avoid, what to eat, not just to make sure that he was controlling their lives, but because he was the life giver, he understood what it would take to live the kind of a life that he wanted them to live. And so very often Israel would go on and off again, you know the story, and they would go in and out of covenant obedience. And when they would violate covenant obedience, the Lord in his faithfulness would, would raise up covenant messengers. And what the messengers of the covenant would do was not only remind Israel of the promises, but they would also highlight the penalty. They would let them know what would happen to them if they would deviate from the plan plan or the agenda of God for them. It was that the covenant messengers would begin to prophesy and they would let the will of God come in the earth to provide safe passage for people into purpose. But not just purpose, also prosperity. And so the old covenant gives us Amos and it gives us Ezekiel. It gives us Hosea, Habakkuk. It gives us several covenant messengers that write an extensive prophetic ministry that gave logos to first century Israel. But it becomes rhema to those of us that believe after the Messiah. Say yes. Now I want to just bring this to you contemporarily. I don't know where I would be without the prophetic privilege without the ability to know the heart the mind the will the passion the purposes and the intent of God and I believe one of the things the Lord is going to do this year is he's going to raise a generation of tremblers those that appreciate the power of the word of God you know you got to be very careful in charismatic and Pentecostal circles when you're around very many people that profess to have heard from God because what creeps up on any type of people is irreverence. And so there is a casual nature of those that feel like they hear from God easily and regularly. I even noticed that there is also a form of dishonor for discernment. That people attribute and people take for granted the ability to distinguish. But thank God for the power of the prophetic. 
I don't know if you would know me if men and women would not stand before me and call me into covenant responsibility. This church would not be here if seers and watchmen and those that could surveillance the aisles and lanes of the spirit by intercession. It would not be here or stand if people did not have the ability to reach in the invisible world, grab hold of an eternal plan and move it out of the incorporeal and manifest it with the spirit of might. Thank God for the power of the prophetic word. I want you to realize that our heritage and uh, our history and our tradition, listen, is that we cannot ignore the Old Testament just because we've been brought into the new covenant. Ah, what it's there for is to review and to evaluate and consider necessary conversation from God. Consistent conversation of God but most importantly the reminders of what God does, what God allows how God moves and people are compliant in covenant I want you to say the word covenant now I know you don't like that because the Bible say that in the last days these are not those but there would be truce breakers, a covenant breaking spirit and whenever you have people that easily oh yeah and routinely and regularly reverse vows abandon covenants now there is a such thing as godly covenants and there is a such thing as demonic covenants but one of the reasons why we have the prophetic word is to bring us into consideration of the covenant of God the thing that he required of the heart the thing that he asked of the soul and the thing that he mandated of the mind and so Isaiah is a very unique book it is a very intriguing book. It is like a microcosm if you examine the syntax of that book. If you go through the dualisms of that book, it is a book that most scholars consider the Bible within the Bible. It is made up of 66 chapters and throughout Isaiah's book, like all of the Old Testament prophets, you find him going through harsh realities and has to prophesy. You find him him going through very unpredictable seasons and has to prophesy. You find him facing insurmountable odds and has to prophesy. And you find him standing before princes and those that oppress and intimidate and has to prophesy. You find that he is married to a prophetess whose whole assignment was to conceive and bring forth his wife and has to prophesy. And so I am enamored at how accurate how articulate and how specific the prophet Isaiah is. I mean, if you think about the type of information he offers us on a revelatory scale, he has the nerve to prophesy that there would come out of Jesse's loins. Now, this is centuries before we know who the shepherd boy is, but he says out of the root and the offspring of Jesse, he prophesied the exact course of the Messiah's trial. He prophesied the exact that power of the new covenant and so he is something of a prophetic ministry that we've got to look out because he ain't no normal prophet he ain't one of those that just prophesies in generics he is somebody whose pen has been shaped with an unusual authority toward the future with an unusual access toward the purposes of God ah, and this is the thing that I want to open this up with saying now many of us as we activate and we yabba dabba do and we you know do the prophecy tricks and the exercises but we have never had to prophesy in exile we have never known what it was to have to prophesy to a people that was imprisoned by the purpose of God a people that was called into divine consequence and you've got to find a word I love your word you've got to find revelation you've got to find insight confirmation affirmation validation you've got to find prognostication to a people uh, that is moving in and living in and eating in and growing in divine consequence ah, 
find what we have now is a season that Isaiah begins to write and takes pen to paper but it's not just important what was prophesied it matters when it was prophesied and many of us pay attention to the content of the word but we don't often pay attention to the context of the word can I preach like I want to God told you some stuff in a moment when you were feeling good in a moment when you had a great job in a moment when your friends were not betraying you in a moment when you weren't questioning folks loyalty God said some stuff to you when your bank account was full God said some stuff to you when your investments were going up but the word of the Lord was not for that moment it was for a moment when the situation and the circumstance and the environment and the reality could only be held fast to by the authority of revelation and so don't make the mistake of thinking that the word of the Lord given to you right now is for right now don't make the mistake of thinking that the warnings are for right now don't make the mistake of thinking that the confirmations are for right now if we are going to be diligent students of prophecy, the oracles of God, the realm of the mysterium, the unknown, the, the realm of God that speaks in dark sayings and parables and utterances, then we've got to dig into how God talks to people while he's doing something in them. Now, I feel real good through here, but I want to let you know before he does it for you, he's going to do it in you. Now, I'm about to work this text, but before he does it for you, that's the realm of provision that's the realm of promise that's the realm of resource that's the realm of access to stuff the tangible and the material but my testimony and our biblical heritage is God does not give people what they cannot manage and he does not allow people to walk into stuff that's going to kill him so the good news to that is if God is about to give you anything he's going to do something to you you first now we understand how to praise and run and shout and dance when he's doing it for us but then what happens is when he starts to do it to us we often don't know how to cooperate so this is a very prophetic preach and uh, it's specific to people who are in moments of quarantine uh, exile limitation privacy it's a, it's for those that all they've got is a vision they don't have the resource yet but they've got the promise of God and this highlights what God does his process his protocol in the life or the formation and the development of a man a woman a people or a place that's getting ready to go somewhere that they've never seen before yell back at me and say yes sir now I want to give you another decree that's going to help you if you're student if you're prudent a prudent this is not a hard season listen to me this is a hardening season I'm gonna say it again this is not a hard season it's a hardening season seasons don't control themselves God is the handler of seasons and so many people right now think that they're just going through a hard time and you're only right a little bit you're not going through a hard thing you're being hardened and and this is needful because of what God knows is about to come next all right now I'm about to lead you through a parenthetic point and then we're going to go through the very significant portions of the prophecy to Israel in exile now, now I want to tell you something and I hope I don't shout by myself on this but I want to let you know that this is your testimony are you ready come on work with me God has brought you out I'm sorry I said God has brought you out God ha don't mean you don't have struggles hey 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 it don't mean you ain't got issues and it don't mean that there ain't some stuff in your life that needs to be healed but if you are alive and breathing and you got oxygen and you got air and you can read and you can write and you know your name you can recognize your children on site then your story is God has brought you out say number one and number two you story is whoo let me get to this text number two your story is not only did he bring you out dr ross 
but in the past he's also taken you in there were things that you shouldn't have had access to things that you were not qualified for things that you did not see coming so he didn't just bring you out to bring you out he brought you out to take you in is there anybody in here that will take two seconds that will remember what he brought me in I was at tables that I didn't deserve in rooms that I didn't deserve amongst people whose caliber and whose weight exceeded mine and I looked around in those rooms and say how in the Hades how in the Gehenna how in the Sheol did I get around here I was rubbing shoulders with giants even though I didn't know what they knew so number two he's taking you in now number three I'm about to tell you where you at now he brought you out scream at me say yes he took you in scream at me say yes and now he's getting ready to cross you over that was the pattern for Israel he brought him out he took him in and then he crossed him over can I get to my text throw your hands up and say I'm crossing over I said say I'm crossing over preach to your own self say I'm crossing over now not only did he bring you out listen to the formula so you can understand the pattern and the setting and the context of my text he brought you out to bring you in he brought you in to cross you over so that means he's done something he's doing something and he's about to do something He's done something. He's doing something. And he's about to do something. He's done something. He's doing something. And he's about to do something. So then what is he doing in the meantime? If you are in between what he's done and you don't quite know what he's doing and you keep hearing words about what he's about to do, what is he doing in the meantime? Here is my text. The covenant messengers of Israel prove through their prophecies that God is in the business of building people for what they were born for. He builds people for their intent. This is why, hey, 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 hey. If somebody went through the exact same test, I could run right there. Woo! The exact same issue, the exact same pain that you went through, they would probably lose their mind, take their life, go to Baghdad, convert to Muslim, and leave God. But the reason you could survive the extreme nature the egregious pain of what you've been living through is because whether you want to admit it or not God built you for what you were born for I know you want me to turn my power but I can't do it today it hurts like hell it's frustrating than a mug you don't understand it you can't comprehend it it's too spontaneous but God built you for what you're going through he built you for what you're going through. Every prophetic word was for the building of you, the intestinal fortitude, the mental power, the, the prowess, the shrewdness, the skills, the sensitivities, the, the proclivities, the, the, the native abilities that you would need to face everything he knew you would face. He did it for Israel and they rejected him. Why you think he ain't do it for you? He built you for this. I just need to move into this. But before I do, I want you to remind yourself, come on, I can't lay hands on you. Lay hands on yourself real quick and say he built me for this come on you're not saying nothing I said say he built me for this I know what I'm doing I'm talking to your inner man you're going to face some things this year where you're going to have to look in your mirror right before you brush your teeth and right before you put on your lotion hopefully and you're going to have to remind yourself God built me for this this is not by accident this is not by coincidence God built me for this so then that means he's building you now for something else he orchestrates according to the pattern in this prophecy times tests moments but the goal is to find the weakness the goal is not to find the strength he allows the test the trial the delay to almost forensically as it were find the weakness 
He wants you to know the weakness. He wants you to see the weakness. If you don't know it, you have nothing to surrender because he can do nothing with your strength. He wants to find the weakness. He wants to put you in an environment like Israel. And for Israel, it was Babylon. But for you, it may be bankruptcy. He wants to put you in an environment to find the weakness because God has consistently wanted to know from his people, particularly those that are the constituents of a promise, what it takes to leave me. I said I was talking about covenant. He wants to know what you'll do when you don't know what to do and who you will flirt with, what you will engage, what you will resuscitate, what you will go back and find, what you will revive if you're in a wrong environment. And so we're finding now that God put Israel in the environment that was suitable to make them get in touch with their weakness. God be praised because if God can get a people that can admit and own their weakness they don't have an inroad for the miraculous if God can get a people to find their weakness to know their weakness to reconcile with their weakness he doesn't have the word is incision to insert his superpower to superimpose himself in that realm to make sure that people can do what they couldn't ordinarily do I know my Bible and you're not going to tell me that God ever used a strong man I'm working in here God never even used a strong people he told Saul listen I'm choosing you not because I like how you look and how you act and how you walk and how you talk but because you're the smallest of these and you come from lower state you don't believe me look at the man you call your savior God went to the ghetto I know you think Santa Claus was the only one that went there but God went straight to the ghetto to a place called Nazareth and found a girl that was the lowest of these I'm telling you right now we don't have the formula right we think we've got to go to God pretentious we've got to go to God acting like we are as strong as we are as known that we are as confident but I thank God for the apostle Paul who said in my weakness I glory in my infirmity I feel like preaching in here I glory in the fact that I need him glory in the fact that I've got to find him glory in the fact that sometimes I don't know what he's doing I glory in the fact that when I asked him to remove this thorn he told me no and the reason he told me no is because one day on Calvary he put a crown of thorns on his head to show that he is king of what hurts me and he can deal with what's dealing with me I need a people that's okay with not being okay in Babylon Israel was able to see more closely their weakness somebody say preach they were able to internalize hallelujah they were able to reflect they were able to remember and they were able to see themselves you know sometimes when you are in uncomfortable environments you're not around the opinions of others all you got is your knowledge of yourself and you got time to consider time to evaluate and time to review and so God allows for unusual environments so that men and women and nations and organizations can come in contact with a weakness but not so it can stay that way he wants to address it I've been saying for the last 21 years if he reveals it he reveals it to heal it he don't reveal it to embarrass you he don't reveal it to uncover you he don't reveal it to make you self-conscious or self-absorbed he reveals it to heal it and much like Israel many of us are so caught off guard by what's going on around us in Babylon in hostile environments that we won't let them heal us uh oh uh oh uh oh uh oh no 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 we okay uh, we're letting them bless us because that's always comfortable we okay we're letting them favor us because that's always good uh, but I want to know uh, who's gonna be honest and say sometimes uh, he has said some stuff uh, did some stuff and allowed some stuff because he wanted to heal me they won't help me 
that didn't always feel good. Healing don't always feel like Tylenol. Sometimes it feels like an aggressive surgery and then it's outpatient. He'll cut a thing open, remove the infection, pull out the toxins and sometimes he won't even give you a local anesthesia. He'll make sure that he does something but he will rather heal you by hurting you than by making you feel good and leaving you with the issue. He was trying to heal Israel. He was trying to heal Israel and so now we see something else in the nature of these types of prophetic admonitions and encouragements. It means that these internal renovations, these internal upgrades, these internal enhancements are mandatory. You don't get to escape them. These are not something you can bind or loose. Somebody just yell at me and say after this what you're going through right now is an aggressive upgrade. You're turning into you 2.0. Your organization is going through a massive overhaul and it's not because you've not found pleasure with God. Actually quite the contrary. He's just trying to make sure that the level of influence say yes that the level of authority say yes will determine how you stand under it. There is a different training for every captain. Now this is a prophetic word that we are examining today. And it's substantial because prophecy not only reveals the tone of God, listen to me. It reveals the technique of God. God does what he says and says what he does. So if we just read what he says and hear what he says, but not pay attention to the logic of why he's saying it, we miss what God is really doing for the future. So this prophetic word in Isaiah 41 gives language to God's commitment to those that he carries and what he's doing in a time. The reality is this, and we're going to go through these important points. I may even holler, okay? Anything that's on the verge of breaking is going to receive a prophetic word. Anything that's on the verge of giving up, anything that is on the verge of unprecedented exhaustion, anything that's going to find its way in regret, remorse, grief, guilt, shame, abandonment, or condemnation, revelation is about to come. God will say a thing to you when you're on the precipice. When you're on the verge of something, he's going to do that. Now, here's what he's going to use it for. It is a military technique, <clears throat> a strategy, because he's trying to make sure that he says enough to locate the things about you that make you not confident in him, the things about you that make you doubt him, and the things about you that give you suspicion to him. Say yes. Now, when we use the phrase breakdown, Nervous breakdown, meltdown. Are we really responsibly examining who's responsible for that? I'm going to show you what it means to have an emotional breakdown, to have a midlife crisis. Don't get quiet in here. To get to a point in a place in your life where you no longer know what you want or who you are or where you're going. What's happened is the enemies and the adversaries of your soul have found a weakness that you've not submitted to God all the way and started to grab a hold to it to steer your meditation. Because anybody that has had a nervous breakdown, why do I feel a chill on Chappelle? Anybody that has had a nervous breakdown or is on their way to having one has allowed the enemy to use the handle of their emotions to make them meditate negatively. Can I preach like I want to? And so what the enemy's goal for you, Israel, is to make sure that while you are in Babylon and while you are in captivity and while the enemies are being allowed and permitted to take your real estate, abduct your children, to make sure that they ruin your portfolio portfolios and do whatever they want to do on your block and on your clock what the enemy wants to do is to make sure that you stop believing that Jehovah is a covenant God that Elohim and El Elyon love that Brian the most high God could ever lose his word and so in this setting here we go and on this issue we have a clear goal are you ready the clear goal it's going to try to happen in different ways beloved it's going to happen at different times but just like the enemy 
always go through idolatry, paganism, seduction, hedonism. His goal for Israel was to make sure that he broke them. I'm about to preach it here. He wanted to break them. Listen, because if I can break you, you'll break your vow to God. You don't read that Bible. If I can break you and make sure that you give up, hey, and that you cave in and that you throw in the towel and that you get so tired and so exhausted, then the consequence and the repercussion and the natural action is going to be, if you can break me, then I have a right to disobey God. If you can break me, I have a right to walk away from the kingdom if you can break me I don't have to obey and so what would the Lord say ah, yeah, 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 yeah. what would the Lord say if I were Isaiah dealing with Israel in the middle of captivity in the middle of exile what would I tell them if I knew that I was not using Babylon to just break them I was using Babylon to help them see that I'm going to be faithful no matter the condition and I will be faithful no matter the environment I will be faithful no matter the time I will be faithful no matter the temple I will be faithful no matter the rhythm and so Isaiah has his ear woken up by the spirit of grace and the Bible said the first thing that came out of his mouth uh, on the 44th chapter of this uh, was fear not. Now I know that that don't mean nothing to you Betty Boop uh, but when a person don't know what's next uh, and when a person don't see how it's going to be uh, and when a person don't know as God is for me or against me uh, that it is appropriate hallelujah it is integral uh, it is faithful uh, it is kind uh, for the first thing for God to say to a people uh, or a place uh, is fear not and in the bible uh, the hebraic meaning of fear come on and let me in here it's paralysis and there are people that are watching me right now all over the world you've not been able to figure out what's wrong with you but some of you have experienced paralysis of purpose paralysis of prayer paralysis of focus what the devil has done listen to me it's caused an emotional injury a psychological fracture and what it's done is it's breaking you uh, so that you cannot move uh, but thank God for the wound in his side uh, because my Bible tells me uh, if the word of God reigns true uh, and I've got to use scripture to interpret scripture uh, my Bible said that God didn't give me uh, a spirit of fear oh, uh, but a power I'm working it here but a power of love and a sound mind who would you be if you weren't afraid what would you do if you weren't afraid how many relationships have you ruined because you were being a chicken how many opportunities did you miss because you was afraid to fail you don't believe God if you really believe God you would walk in the door even if you was afraid it was going to close behind your back because the Bible said fear not listen to the next word because there is nothing to fear what he's showing us is uh, Israel like you uh, had a problem in the realm of their perspective uh, they had a problem in the realm uh, of what they would allow in their mind uh, grab your head right now uh, in the name of Jesus uh, may the entire kingdom of fear it's not just a demon uh, it's an entire region uh, it's a civilization uh, it uses tentacles uh, it uses scorpions uh, it uses foxes uh, I prophesy uh, to your corpus callosa the left and the right hemisphere of your brain and I say over the next 90 days God's getting ready to deliver you from the power of fear from the threats of fear fear in the brain fear in the heart fear in your relationships fear in your career fear in your family fear over your body fear of your family somebody scream get up fear not fear not fear manifests in a whole lot of ways now, now now this is also a statement not just about what is but what's coming nobody normally experiences fear from past things what they do is they use past things to justify future fears this talks about events and 
impossibilities and so God's prophetic instructions was to fear not what he's really saying in code and in prophetic encryption is don't be afraid and here's why he tells them not to be afraid you know what blesses me China you sang so beautifully today sweetheart 365 days are in this year and there are 365 statements in the Bible that said do not fear that means for every day you'll ever have you'll never have a reason to fear I hear you JJ in my ear I have no reason to fear I have no reason to fear can I walk through the book of Psalms just for a minute come here David let me borrow your pen the Lord is my light and my salvation oh! shall I fear the Lord is the strength of my life of whom shall I be a hey 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 so don't be afraid he told Moses don't be afraid and then when he got to the after plan of Moses his name was Joshua first thing God told Joshua was that Moses my servant is dead and when you're dealing with the issue of death you're dealing with if it's going to happen to me next can I preach like I want to when you hear somebody coughing in the grocery store the devil starts whispering to you and tell you you got coronavirus but I heard the Holy Ghost say as I was with Moses so shall I be with you and none of these plans are going to come now your dwelling it's not coming to your house I don't know who I'm talking to but wherever I see the blood I've got to pass on fear not for there is nothing to fear and here is why the second element of this prophecy to Israel is for I am with you the folk that are afraid don't know who's with them the folk that are nervous don't know who's behind them the devil don't know the support system the eternal engine and the muscularity of a holy God that is behind your next move that is behind your next statement you don't have nothing to be afraid of not because it's not dangerous and not even because it's not scary Israel but the reason you don't have anything to be afraid of is because God is with you in Exodus 33 and 14 he tells Moses I'm gonna be with you and I am that I am I'm gonna be with you and I'm gonna go with you that means that everything I got is disposable to your destiny it's called grace here is a third element of this prophecy do not look around don't look around in terror and don't be dismayed he says in moments of uncertainty you have to fight for your focus it is not something that comes easily. It, it, it is a matter of daily decision to focus. Oh, yeah. Focus. Focus is the tool of the future. It is the roadmap of the future. It is a compass of the future. This says that things are probably going to walk past you. I'm working in here. It's going to come in your vicinity. It's going to happen around you. But God says don't focus on it because here's what happens. Whenever you are tormented, there is a breach in the realm of your focus. The thing that you're focusing on, torment, these ambushments happen that make you focus on the wrong thing. What's the formula? Fear not. I'm with you. Don't look around and be dismayed. And I will harden you to difficulty. What if I told you you're too soft? What if I told you you were too sensitive? I know you look tough, you bully. But the real truth is you're soft. <laughs> you're soft. You don't see yourself the way the Lord sees you. You don't really think psychologically you can handle the stuff folk are prophesying to you. There is a hardening that has to happen. And this is not a, 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 a callousness, no. Peradventure, this is not even something that has to do with bitterness. It has nothing to do 
with people and everything to do with what you can go through before you break, what you can face before you break. These are areas of vulnerability in you that's cost you the victory before. These are areas of weakness in your mind that may cost you your calling. These are areas of cute inconsistency. These are areas of casual doubt that are ruled by fear. And so what God allows for Babylon to do, exile to do, quarantine to do, is make sure that he hits you in every realm that you need strength. This is intellectual strength. This is spiritual strength. This is physical strength. This is organizational strength. This is familial strength. And I got a word for you. It's also financial strength. Uh His goal is to harden you. Harden you. Your strength level is important to God. I said your strength level is important to God. You can see it all you want. You can say it all you want. If you're not strong enough for it, your purpose, the promised land, the place you're going to conquer is going to be so intimidating to you that you'll walk out of it even though God promised it. How strong are you? Are you as strong as you need to be? Can you handle an injury and move forward? Can you get so strong? Oh, watch me here. Can you ignore an insult? Can you be okay with realizing that you're always going to have an aggregate people dishonor, disrespect, not fully see who you are, respect where you're going, uh, uh, forget the things you caused them to do, forget the kindness and the opportunity. Are you hard enough for that yet? Or is that enough to put you in a cave and make you walk away from the things God's been preparing? preparing you for are you okay with the fact that you may have friends you may have associates and affiliates that if you never picked up the phone they probably wouldn't pick up the phone I know you don't want me are you okay with the fact that you're going to be the initiator are you okay with the fact that based upon how God is trying to mature you you may be the one to apologize listen even when you ain't done nothing wrong are you okay with the fact that folk that you loan money to don't even have the call to say thank you are you okay with the fact that people will use you as long as you let them and then when you stop letting them they'll cry abuse i want to know how hard you're willing to be are you okay do you believe that your destiny and your assignment and your career and your degree and your vision is in the hands of them or do you honestly believe that god has laid the way and that he's opened the door and if he opened the door he's not gonna call you there and not give you the power to stay there he's going to do whatever it takes to make Make you hard for the assignment. Psalms 84 and 7, Dr. Ross, is something that waxes in this thing. Something that interweaves perfectly homiletically to our text. It says they're going to go from strength to strength. I feel like running through here. You're not just going to last in the next season based upon the last season's level of strength. Jesus said, how can a strong man have his goods taken except one stronger than him? comes in and binds him many of you have been trying to bind things that's stronger than you but sometimes the only way you can deal with a strong man is you've got to be stronger than him you can't just cuss at him and fuss at him and weaken at him you got to be stronger than the strong man and I declare over your soul I ain't talking to your resume I ain't talking to your language I'm talking to your inner man you are waxing from strength to strength yeah you've been strong before yes you've endured a lot yes you've faced a lot but who will shout with me and declare that at the latter part of 2020 I'm getting ready to wax strong oh no devil you thought I was going to sit in a basement smoke a little weed try to kill myself run away from home leave my job but the devil's a liar he's a father of lies he's alive from the beginning and he's lying right now he's afraid of your next realm of strength strength is coming to you stronger stronger so there is there is a hardening a hardening 
that's needful at every level of promotion. It's needful at every level of opportunity. You, you'll get harder. It's not stubborn. It's not rebellious. It, th th there is a spiritual muscularity and vascularity that helps you to flow, that gives you acuity and dexterity for the doors that the Lord has decided that you're going to walk in. So if the Lord has not changed the circumstance, if he's not changed the season, if he's not changed the environment, he's trying to make you lift a little more. He wants to make you harder. Harder. A lot of people want the glory, but they don't want to live through what it takes to get the guts. You've got to have guts. Not just oil on your head, paper in your hand. You've got to have guts. You know how many Christians are not millionaires? Not because they're not intelligent, but they had a guts. How many people are stagnant in life and purpose because they didn't have the guts? You've got to have the guts to go in. But like Israel, we have an idolatry. This has shown us, Pastor Keith, 2020. Hasta bakore. 2020 has shown us that we really have an idolatry of ease. We like ease. Amos 6 says, woe to them that are at ease in Zion. <laughs> because if, if, if you want ease, and then the enemy will make you think that it's favor, then you develop an addiction, your palate. But, but, but this is going to be a time in your life, Israel, where you're going to have to work hard to get out. And then you're going to have to work hard to stay in. And it won't be that you have enemies. I've taken care of that. You're going to have to fight yourself. Isaiah 41 says, you will look for them that oppose you and you won't find them. Because your greatest adversaries are never external. Your greatest enemies are never external. They are all internal and they set up networks in your soul. Your mind, your heart, your fears, your thoughts, your beliefs, your processes. So you have to have the guts if you want to have the glory. It, 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 you need to recognize in closing that this prophecy shows us there is an extreme difference between the hardening process of God and demonic attack. Some of you have been calling attack what in reality is divine hardening. The hardening, the hardening power of God. God has not given anything the authority to break you. Nothing. Nothing. Do you think you'd be here if the enemy had license to break you? Do you think you'd even want to lift your hands if the enemy could break you? The problem is he knows it. I'm trying to, like Isaiah, convince you. Because of how God is hardening you, you're not going to break. <laughs> You'll be frustrated. You'll be uncertain. You have moments of anger. You may even cuss, but you're not going to break. You were not built to break. And he's building you now for what may try to break you next. But you have to be reminded, I've been hardened by God. If the attacks get stronger, it's because you did. God will not allow something that's heavier than you to break you. So if it's getting harder, whoa! If it's getting more complicated, if it's getting more unique, if, if, the, if the attack is complex, it's because there are things in you that may have changed before you knew it. And it's possible that you'd be the last one to notice that you've changed. God has used this season to change you. You're coming out of this season changed. But the guarantee of the Lord, the promise of the Lord, is you're not going to break. I will harden you to difficulty. When I started my athletic journey, my wife was very much into weightlifting and calisthenics and all of that stuff. And quite frankly, I was disinterested. And several years ago, I started a very rigorous routine of going to the gym and working out and I learned a very powerful lesson very early on. 
One of the secrets to being able to wax stronger is to lift heavier. It's not just about repetition. Some of you are trying to get stronger, but you're lifting 10-pound dumbbells. And you're wondering why there's no definition in your body. That's aerobics. <laughs> That's not working out. You'll actually lose weight that way. You gain weight by pressure. You gain weight by power. The other thing, E.P. Bond, that I learned is when you start to try to lift things that's above your frame, maybe you got the desire to do it, the energy to do it, the eyes to do it, if you don't have the right spotters behind you, then what you lift may cause you injury even though it was designed to build your muscularity. I want to know if you've got toxic spotters. You don't want to have this conversation right now, I know, but I'm talking to you about what 2020 is teaching you about relationships, about what 2020 is teaching you about who you trust with what. Some people are behind you, but they're not really helping you lift. <laughs> they're not making sure that your posture is correct. Matter of fact, some of them encourage you in off posture. <laughs> You'll hurt yourself. If you don't have the right spotters, you've got to put in the blood, the sweat, the tears. But I love the story of Zerubbabel when he says to the mountain, who are you? For you're going to come down with shouts of grace, grace. I want you to lift your hands if you're watching me, if you're in this room. And I want you to declare over yourself, I will not break. Come on, say it out your mouth. I want you to let the devil hear it. I will not break. Come on, say it again. Come on, say, I will not break. I will not break. I will not break. Not anything in my life. I will not break. I will not. Come on, say it again. I will not break. Yeah. It, God is too good to let me break. He didn't even let Jesus break. The Bible said it was written in the book of Psalms. Not one of his bones will be broken. You may get pierced. You may get bruised. I'll even allow some lashes upon your back. But whatever is going on around you, you will not. God built to break. Worship him, will you? The part I didn't get to is the promise of how you won't break. I will uphold you with my right hand. <laughs> is there anybody in here that has a testimony? I would have breached. But something bigger than me was holding me up. Something more powerful than me was holding me steady. Something more powerful. And just because you don't realize it's the hand of God, you need to be sobered with this one reality. You are not holding yourself up. You are not the reason you survive. You are not what's causing your sanity. You are are not the reason you see you are not the reason the sun does not smite you or the moon does not hurt you the hand of God is holding it the hand of God is holding his people up I declare this all around the nation you are being upheld by the hand of God lean on him church that's what he's there for he don't want you to slip he don't want you to falter he don't want you to crack he don't want you to crumble he wants to uphold you he wants to hold you up he wants to hold you up he wants to hold you up, hold you up. but you are are going to leave 2020 and you're going to go into 2021 and your testimony your autobiography your story your narrative is going to be the Lord upheld me I would have faulted I would have broken down but something was holding me come on girl get some guts come on son be strong you you will not break. I will harden you. Sometimes the loving kindness of the Lord shows up as tough love. And the point and the purpose of it it's to make you do what you don't think you can do. You need the lesson. 
So he'll just harden you. He'll harden you. He'll harden you. And he'll allow you to change intellectually, emotionally, relationally, spiritually, devotionally. He'll allow you to change because he knows where you're going next. The word of the Lord to you is the word of the Lord in Joshua 1 and then again in Joshua 3. You've not been this way before. So let him harden you. It's okay. It's not hell, it's heaven. And he's hardening you. Father, I lift my voice in earnest supplication for your people all around the world that have forgotten your promise concerning them. And they don't realize how much effort you've put into strengthening them. How much intentionality you put into making them stronger. And there are people watching me around the world that feel like they're waning in strength. In various areas and levels of their lives. And I'm praying right now in the name of Jesus. Strengthen your people. Strengthen your people. Strengthen your church. Strengthen intercessors. Strengthen evangelists. Strengthen pastors and teachers and missionaries. Strengthen husbands. Strengthen wives and sons and daughters. Strengthen administrators. Strengthen politicians and rulers and magistrates. Strengthen them. Send supernatural strength out of Zion. May they feel the strength of God in them. And your word promises that they would go from strength to strength. I declare over your people everywhere watching me, you're waxing much stronger than before. This is the word of the Lord concerning you. You're called to be strong. And it doesn't mean you won't hurt. And it doesn't mean it'll be fair. It doesn't mean that you can't be a human. It means that you have a strength mandate upon your life. And you've got to grow into what God has called you to. The strength of God come upon you. I bless you in Jesus' name. If you're watching me over the world wide web, I want to invite you to become a member of this church. I'd love to be your pastor. I'd love for this to be your global community. And we are opening <laughs> around the world more than you've ever seen before. I want you to invite you to join. It's joinnye.com. You can choose any campus, but you need a family right now. I bid you peace in Jesus name if you're in this room and you want to just kind of linger a bit I may invite you to the altar I'm going to pray some more because I feel like the Lord wants to do if you feel comfortable and desire to you can come to the altar as long as you're spaced out and I'm going to have the minstrels lift up worship I believe the Lord is strengthening his people even now come on let's do that even now he's strengthening his people Come on. Lift it up for a minute and then I'm going to move into intercession. Come on. Lift your hearts to the Lord. 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 Lift your hearts to Him. Lift your hearts to Him. Lift your heart to Him. Lift your heart to Him. Ah. Ooh. Come on, find the vein. Something's happening. Come on, lift your weaknesses to Him. Lift your questions to Him. Lift your doubts to Him. Lift your worries to Him. Lift them, lift them to Him. Lift your dreams to Him. 
Yes, lift your nightmares to Him. Lift your stress to Him. Come on, lift it right now. It's going up to heaven like a fragrant burning. Oh, yes, it is. It's going up to heaven like a sweet incense, like a fragrant perfume. Father, your people cry out to you. Your people cry out to you. Your people cry out to you. This morning we cry out from this holy place asking that you would show yourself strong. Lord, we've attempted and Lord, we've tried to do it, to see it, to be it, to conquer it in our own strength. And every time we try to do it in our own strength we've seen time and time again that if we can't do it in our strength it's because we need yours Lord your word promises that whatever we ask in your name that it will be done and right now we're not asking for houses we're not asking for cars we're not asking for 401ks we're not asking for mates We're not asking for stocks. We're not asking for bonds. We're not asking for policies. We're not asking for invitations. We're not asking for anything physical. What we're asking for this morning is a sudden change in our level of strength. Oh, yes, my God. Who else is strong like you? Nobody know where you carry the universe upon you your shoulders and you sent your son down 42 generations and he lived for 33 years and he endured the harsh ridicule the pain he endured the trial the tribulation he endured civil unrest he endured personal injustice he endured relational betrayal and yet on the cross he bellows out from heaven father into thy hands do I commit my spirit forgive them for they don't know what they're doing for that is the cry of a man made strong that is the cry of a man waxed strong that is the travail of a man that is experienced the strength of God that is not carnal strength that is not natural strength it is the strength of God and right now Father, we make supplication for every partner, every leader, every elder of the All Nations Worship Assembly. Let the strength of God be made manifest in the name of Jesus. I make intercession, even like the priests of old, on the behalf of Israel. Yes, even the apple of your eye. Say, make your people strong. Strengthen them in their inner man. Strengthen them in their their study strengthen them in their scholarship strengthen them in their relationship strengthen them in their decree strengthen them in their worship strengthen them in their family life in the name of Jesus we present we posture our weaknesses our limitations our inhibitions unto you so that we may humble ourselves around the strength of God we're not gonna flex against you so strengthen your people stand up let God arise and let his enemies be scattered stand up in the midst of Israel stand up in the midst of Jerusalem stand up in the midst of Zion in the name of Jesus for there are those around the world that have prognosticated and there are those around the world that have predicted that the house of God is going down uh, that the house of God uh, is going to drown uh, but we declare uh, the fire of God uh, the judgment of God uh, we declare uh, Elohim uh, is exhaling uh, against every Noadiah uh, that's trying to get uh, Nehemiah uh, to come off the wall uh, and to stop building uh, but even as it was uh, in the days of the cupbearer uh, you put a weapon uh, and a building utensil uh, in the hand of 
no, uh, 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 Nehemiah so that he would not come down and you strengthened him and you strengthened him and you strengthened him and you strengthened him this is our portion this is our plea this is our reward all we want is the strength not just the strength to climb the mountain you've not called us to climb mountains you called us to talk to them and it takes a strong people to say to mountains get the heck out my way in the name of Jesus we declare the strength of God hey over every armor bearer every adjutant every assistant every aid in the name of Jesus I declare I decree the ministry of the gift of helps manifesting in the body of Christ everybody wants the other gifts but I declare that the gift of government and the gift of helps is being manifest anointed help prophetic help celestial help angelic help relational help 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 is coming out of the sanctuary this is the word of the Lord help is coming to carry the vision the purpose the mandate sudden help foreign help unusual help help of different ethnicities help of different classes help of different ages help it's coming let it be so straighten your people Lord you told me this morning in my closet son raise me an army and we say yes we say yes this is the season that makes generals this is the season that makes lieutenants this is the season that makes captains the army of the Lord waxes stronger and we declare we're coming into a greater level of authority than we've ever seen before because we received the strength of God I declare this we wax strong as a matter of decision as a matter of choice as a matter of obedience now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the Lord with exceeding great joy to him be all blessings and honor dominion and power both now and throughout eternity we say so it is so it is so it is